day that the Lord has made, let us rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for welcome, uh, we welcome you for joining us this morning our service as we get prepared for a day of service unto the Lord. Amen. We give all honor and glory to God. We want to wish all the mothers a happy Mother's Day. Amen. Let us bow our heads and go before the throne of grace. Heavenly Father, we want to just bless you with our thanksgiving, God, today. That you have found it fitting for us to be in the land of the living, Lord. We thank you for your loving kindness towards us, God. For you have been good to us, Lord. We thank you that you are raising us up and knitting us together and building us up. And you are meeting our every needs, God. For you are a great God, Lord. And we just give you praise on, unto this day, Lord, for all that you have done, God. We, uh, we ask that you would anoint our service and receive our sacrifice of worship unto you, O oh God, because you are indeed worthy, Lord God. So anoint our pastor, Lord God, in thy word that goes forth, Lord God. Let it land on good seed, Lord God, good soil in our hearts and our minds and our spirit, God. We give you praise and honor and glory. In Jesus' name, let the church of God say, thank God. Thank God. Amen. Amen. So we welcome our pastor. Let's give our hands to our pastor and we welcome you. Amen. God bless you, Minister Spade. And to all the people of God on today, I want to say good morning, L.O.B. And those of you joining us via social media, that this is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. In the midst of this coronavirus pandemic, I bring you good news. You have no reason to fear. God is in control. I want you to keep the faith. Psalms 121 and 4 says, Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall never slumber or sleep. I come to encourage and strengthen those of you in the faith to let you know that this too shall pass. And so may the blessings of the Lord be upon you. And we want to say happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers on today. May the blessings of God be with you and may you have a joyful, joyful day. Again, we want to continue to pray for our first responders, those nurses and those doctors, those that are even cleaning up in the hospitals and making sure everything is, has been sanitized, we pray for you. We pray for our fire department and our police department. We pray for the President of the United States, Congress, and the Senate. We want God to continue to look on us, even during this time of this pandemic. So may the blessings of God be with you as God continues to help us navigate through a period that we've never seen before. And I know that God will take us through. So I want you to hold your head up and allow God to continue to minister to you through this period and through this time. So Father, I thank you and I glorify you and I honor you as we bring forth this word. Hide me behind the cross that you may be seen. Take the hot coals off the altar, place them on thy lips, and purify for thy word. And Lord, we will say yes unto thee. And the God of ask you now look on our presiding bishop, the Bishop Charles Edward Blake, Mother Lewis, our general and jurisdictional supervisor. We ask you to bless them, O oh God. Look on our jurisdiction. Look on bishops everywhere. Look on the church of God in Christ. All ministries, all pastors. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I want to speak to you on today from these, this scripture of Esther. Esther chapter 4, verse 13 through 16. Verse 13 through 16. Again, we've already said Happy Mother's Day, but the 
fragrance of Lily of the Valley is in the house. Amen. Lady J. And so a special happy Mother's Day to her. Amen. And we want to look at the word of the Lord from the book of Esther, chapter 4, verses 13 through 16. Verses 13 through 16. And you will find these words. Then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther, Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knows whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Then Esther bade them return Mordecai this answer. Go, gather together all the Jews that are present in Shum, and fast ye for me, and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise, and so will I go unto the king, which is not according to the law, and if I perish, I perish. I want to speak to you the next fleeting moments from these words, trust God for the outcome. Trust God for the outcome. Yes, sir. God bless you. Just before I minister uh, on today, I uh, know that a couple of our mothers are on the line, whether they're uh, streaming or whether they're conference call. And I, uh, we have a mother that's 94 years young, and uh, we have another mother, which is our church mother, that's 80 years. And to all the other mothers, I just want to sing a little song. Uh, she uh, requested a song, and I'm going to sing this little song for her. Is that all right? It's all right, Pastor. Uh, Y'all back? No, don't back me up. Don't back me up. I, I do bad by myself. Is that all right? <laughs> all right. Uh, Amazing. Sing grace. Thank Pastor. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Right. 
we first be complications. 
Queen Vesta refused to parade uh, before the king's all-male party, possibly because it was against the Persian custom for a woman to appear before the public gathering of men. This conflict between the Persian custom and the king's command put her in a difficult situation. And she chose to refuse her half-drunk husband, hoping he would come to his senses later. Her actions was a breach of protocol that also placed a hazard in a difficult situation. Once he made the command as a Persian king, he could not reverse it. While preparing for to invade Greece, a hazard had invited important officials from all over the land to see his power, his wealth, and his authority. If it was perceived that he had no authority over his own wife, his military credibility would be damaged and the greatest uh, criticism of success for an ancient king. In addition, King Ahasuerus was accustomed to getting what he wants. As I speak to the women on today, uh, on this Mother's Day, I'm here to let you know all circumstances are not in your favor. And there are some decisions that you're just going to have to make. Yes, sir. Even if it costs you something, yes, sir. you may just have to make that decision. And here we're looking at King Ahasuerus in his drunken stupor is making bad decisions. But my brothers and my sisters, when people are asking you to do things when they're not really all in their right faculties, you've got to be sober enough to make sure you do the right thing. That's why you want to stay in control of your faculties and stay in control of your mind. And the only way you can stay in control of your right mind is to make sure you got God on your side. Yes, it looked bad. Yes, Vesta was saying no uh, to the king. She was not. Even some history says she possibly could have been pregnant and she didn't want anybody to see her as that. But the main point here is that irregardless of what the circumstances were, she was not going to bow down and, uh, 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 and, and lose her dignity over what somebody wants her to do, even though they may have authority over them. My sisters that are here today, I'm here to let you know that it doesn't matter what may come in your life. You don't have to bow down to nobody. You know, oh Lord, help me, Holy Ghost. Yes, I understand the circumstances that are here, and right is right when it's put in the right perspective, but we must understand that irregardless of what's going on, you young ladies that are watching, you young mothers that are watching, you that are middle-aged, and even some of you that are cougars, you do, do not have to bow down to nobody to get what you want. You don't have to give in to the toys that someone they bring to you, the gifts that they bring to you in order to pull you in. You've got to make a standard for the Lord Jesus Christ. And more important, you've got to have a standard for yourself. Amen. You've got to first judge yourself. You've got to make sure you find out how important you are. Value yourself. Value yourself. Why are you so insecure about who you are? You are who you are. You just are. And so if you want this, you have to accept the way this is. I can't get nobody to help me right there. And so I'm saying to you, don't look at the fine car. Don't look at, don't look at the, fine, the, the money in the pocket. Don't look at none of that. Those are lures to lure you in. In order to end up treating you in a way that you're not going to 
on the water be treated. So you have to make sure that you've already told yourself what kind of relationship, what kind of man, what kind of listen, can I tell you something? You can do bad all by yourself. You don't need nobody to prop you up. You don't need nobody to approve you. You got to just put your hands in the hands of God and the Lord will approve you. Somebody ought to shout glory in here. King Ahasuerus, he was accustomed to getting whatever he wanted, but now watch this. The king usually asks for advice from all the experts in royal decree and decision. These officials of the Persians and the Medes had access to the king and held the highest rank in the kingdom. The king asked these wise men who knew the times according to the royal decree, what must we do with Queen Vesta? She did not obey the king a hazardous command which the eunuch delivered. And then uh, uh, Meacham, uh, he spoke up and with the presence of the king and the officials and said Queen Vesta had done wrong not only against the king but also against all the officials and all the people in every province of the king of Ahasuerus. If it please you, if it please you, your majesty, issue a royal decree. It should be recorded in the decrees of the Persian and the Medes never to be repealed that Vesta may never again appear in front of the king of Hazareth. Furthermore, your majesty, you should give her royal position to another woman who is more worthy than she. When you issue your decree, your whole kingdom, great as it is, will hear it. Then all the wives will obey their husband regardless of their stature. But let me go on just a little bit further. Perhaps the men thinking have been clouded by drinking. Obviously, this law would not call the women of the country to respect their husband. Respect between men and women come from mutual regard and appreciation for each other as those created in God's image, not from a legal pronouncement and an order. Forced obedience is a poor substitute for the love and respect wives and husbands should have for each other. My brothers and my sisters, you don't need to be in no relationship where your love is forced out of you. If it cannot be respect, if you cannot be respected before you go further in that relationship, you may need to consider, do I need to be in this relationship? I wish I had some Somebody help me here. Ah, the spirit of my brothers is still up to us to make sure that we show respect for the wife that you have, the, the wife that you're going to have. You need to show respect. You need to show love. You cannot command love. You cannot order love. You cannot demand love. You cannot have a relationship where you telling your wife you jump and don't come down. That is not a relationship. That is a dictatorship. But a women want to want to be loved. And if you can't be loved like you want to be loved, Queen Vesta showed us today that if you ask me to do the wrong thing for the wrong purpose, then I'm not going to perform for you. I don't care what it costs me. I don't care. No, I can't get nobody help me here. That's not for the women. That's for you brothers that are listening as well. You need to understand. Don't let nobody force you into doing things that you know that is not right to do. Because if you do, even though it costs you, it can cost you for the wrong reason. If it's going to cost you, let it cost me for doing what's right. That's all right. Let it cost me for doing what's right. Can I get an amen in here? Amen. So, so watch this. The Persian kings collected not only a vast amounts of jewelry, 
but also a great number of women now. They're moving on from uh, Queen Vesta. She lost her queenship over not exploiting herself. Uh, again, you got to have standards for yourself. Don't let nobody exploit you. Can I get an amen in here? Amen. I got a few women in here that they ought to be shouting amen real loud in here. And so don't let nobody exploit you. But first of all, you got to know who you are. And not to know who you are. You got to know who you are. You got to know that God made you. It doesn't matter if your circumstances, God made you. And he knew what you were going to end up being. And so in regardless, he still says, I love you. In regardless, he still says, I want you. He, in regardless, he still says, come unto me, all ye that labor in the heaven later, and I will give you rest. Can I get an amen? So now the search is on. The search is on. The search is on. And the Persian king, they've not only collected or uh, only vast amounts of jewelry, but they also had great number of women. These young virgins were taken from their homes and were required to live in a separate building near the palace called a harem. Their sole purpose was to serve the king and to await his call for sexual pleasures. They rarely saw the king and their lives were restricted and boring. If rejected, even Esther would uh, be one of the many girls the king had seen once and forgotten. But Esther, watch this y'all, Sister Esther, presence and beauty Please the king enough that he crowned her queen in the palace in the place of Vesta. The queen held a more influ influential position than the concubine, and she was given more freedom and authority than others in the harem. But even as queen, Esther had few rights, especially because she had been chosen to replace a woman who had became too assertive. I want to stop just for a minute to let you know, even though, my sisters, I want you to hear this real good, even though that uh, here we have Sister Esther. Sister Esther uh, was adopted by Mordecai. And if she was adopted by Mordecai, who was high uh, into the kingdom of, of King Ahasuerus. But here, she was still put in a separate place to be set aside for the king. And then later, she, when the king noticed her beauty, he yet brought her up to replace Vesta. My sisters, I want to hear that you know today that it doesn't matter what of life that you have lived when God wants to bring you up. He will bring you from the ashes of what the world has for you. Yes, she was in a harem. And here in this harem, she was there to give pleasure to the king. Even before she would go to the king, she would have to be bathed six months. And then again, to clean again for another six months, uh, oil down and made in order to see the king, but it doesn't matter what type of life you lived, when it's time for you to be brought up, God knows where you are, he knows that you have three children by three different daddies, he knows that you've been married two, three, four times, he knows, I can't get nobody to help me here, he knows your name. City. He knows when you was in the bars and when you was in the clubs. He knows you lived a righteous life. But when he gets ready to pull you up, he's not looking at where you are. He's still looking at your beauty. He's still looking at your presence. And know he can take what's left of you and make more out of you than what the devil has used. 
for standing up for what is right. And now here is this pretty, beautiful woman by the name of Esther. She, she now has been pulled up in order to be the new queen because the king is looking at her beauty. Esther does to continue. Watch this. He even knows that she was pulled up by the king. Esther continued to keep her family background and nationality a secret. She was still following Mordecai's directions just as she did when she lived in his house. One day as Mordecai was on duty at the king's gate, two of the king's eunuchs who were, I want you to don't forget this here, who were guards at the door of the king's private quarters became angry at King Ahasuerus and plotted to assassinate him. But Mordecai heard about the plot and gave the information to Queen Esther. Ah, uh, she told, she then told the king about it and gave Mordecai credit for the report. When an investigation was made and Mordecai's story was found to be true, Therefore, they were brought and hung on the tree. Listen, you don't understand sometimes why God has maneuvered you to be in a certain place at a certain time. I can't get nobody to help me here. Here now, that Queen Esther is now the queen. And now Mordecai, who adopted her, have heard the plot of the assassination plot that was against King Ahasuerus and she, he told her sister Esther and Esther told the king and they was able to foil the plot that had came against them. Can I stop right there for a moment? Minister Spade, can I stop there for a moment? Vanessa, can I stop there for a moment? Can I digress just for a moment? I don't care what the devil God's got somebody that can hear what the devil is trying to do. He may be trying to assassinate you and take you out. Assassinate your character. Assassinate your mind. Assassinate your ability. But the devil is a liar. When God, you can't go nowhere until God says it's time for you to go. If you hold on to God, if you trust him and wait for the outcome, he will bring out. I just had to get that out of me. So look at what's happening here. They took the man and hung him by a tree. Now watch this. Mordecai's determination came from his faith in God. He had the courage to stand alone. Sometimes my brothers and my sisters, you have to stand alone. You have to stand when nobody else would stand. You got to hold on and stand where God wants you to stand. I know your relatives don't understand you. I know sisters and brothers and sometimes your mother and father don't understand you, but you've got to hold on and stand anyhow. Somebody shout glory in here. Doing what is right will not always make you popular. Those who do right will be in the minority, but to obey God is more important than to obey people. You want to find yourself staying in the will of God. Keep doing what God has instructed you to do because you belong to my Savior. Somebody shout glory in here. Somebody shout glory in here. And so as long as you hold on to God's unchanging hands, he will see you through. Here we find now that when he made a stand, sometimes you got to make that stand even when it costs you. Watch this, what I'm talking about. Mordecai had refused to kneel down before Haman. Mordecai was not about to kneel 
before the wicked Haman because if he did this, this would be acknowledging Haman as a god. Oh, wait, can I stop that there, right there? You've got to watch what you do with folks because if you do certain things with folks with folks, you are endorsing what folks is doing. I can't get nobody to help me. Lady J can quit the church today. I'm going to give her a kiss and say, baby, I'm on my way to the house of God. I can't stop because you stopped. I can't stop. And listen, my brothers and sisters, God has been too good to us to stop doing what we are doing in order to bow down and act like somebody else. Ring. 
uh, Ahasuerus gave him personal signature and with it the authority to do uh, whatever he wished. Uh, little did the king realize uh, that his own ring uh, would sign the death warrant uh, for his queen Esther. Uh, now after the decree uh, to kill the Jews was given. Mordecai and Esther, watch this, could have despaired, decided to save only themselves, or just waited for God's intervention. Instead, they saw that God had placed them in their position for a purpose. So they seized the moment and acted. When it is within your reach to serve others, we must do so in, a, in the life of threatening situations. Don't withdraw. Behave selfishly. Waddle in despair. Wait for God to fix everything. Instead, ask God for his direction and act. God may have placed you where you are for such a time as this. I don't be afraid of what the enemy think he can do. Uh, he can't go no further than what God allows him to do. That's why you gotta trust him and wait for the outcome. Somebody help me say trust him and wait for the outcome. Now, 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 uh, Esther saw what's this deep. Esther understood that I have a great before me. I got a great task. When God gives you a great task, there are certain things you're going to have to do. So when the Esther found out she had this great task, she called for a fast. Esther was asking the Jews to pray for God's help and his dangerous mission. Just save your skin. Now watch this. Save your own skin and watch out out for number one. Watch out for number one. Our mottos that reflect our world's selfish outlook in life. But Esther's attitude stands in bold contrast to this. She knew what she had to do, and she knew she, she knew it would cost her her life. But yet she responded, "If I perish." Ah, uh, my brothers and my sisters, you got to make up in your mind that there's some things worth dying for, holding up the bloodstained banner for the Lord. There's some things that you got to make sure that, that you don't give up on God. God will never give up on you. Trust Him. He will make a way. Trust Him. He will show you the way. Trust him and let the world know that if I perish for standing up for the bloodstained banner, then just let me perish because I love God more than I love the world. Somebody ought to shout glory. Somebody shout glory. I'm almost done here, y'all. Now, Haman, Haman, Haman's family and friends were uh, that who were uh, as arrogant as he is. Uh, they suggested uh, because Mordecai uh, would not bow down to Haman. Uh, they suggested uh, that a gallow of 75 feet high uh, be built on the city wall uh, and some prominent building. Uh, they wanted to make sure that all the people of the city saw Mordecai's death uh, and would be rem reminded uh, of the consequences uh, of disobeying Haman. Uh, oh, my brothers and sisters, uh, sometimes you may be made a martyr out of, uh, but that's all right uh, when they open up the casket uh, and they open up the, the, the top of the casket. Uh, let it be written uh, on the inside of the casket. Uh,
out of here. Now, 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 watch this. While, while Haman, woo, while Haman is conspiring to hang Mordecai, look at God. He could, he did God went over to King Ahasuerus bedroom and he was unable to sleep. The king decided to review the history of his reign and his servant read to him about mortal servant, about Mordecai's good deeds. This seemed coincidental, but God is always at work. Put 
you in the gallows. But God has already got a plan for you. Somebody ought to shout glory. Yes. So the same man that was ready to hang Haman, I mean, ready to hang Mordecai, now had to prepare a good a celebration for the man. Device 
He wanted to kill Mordecai with. He was hungry. My brothers and my sisters, trust God yes. for the outcome. Yes, yes. Do what's right. Yeah. Watch God. Watch. Yes. Work yes. on your behalf. Yes. The race has been given to the swift and the strong. Well, that's the book. But he <laughs> endured uh -huh. to the end. My brothers and my sisters that are watching us by live stream. I really wasn't done, but I'm going to stop. Because my cameraman looking at me. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I got to invite you to Jesus. Yeah. I got to invite you to trust him. Trust God. Trust God. And wait Hallelujah. for the outcome. Yes, yes. Just as well as the enemy is maneuvering to take you out. Mm -hmm. God oh. is strategizing yes. to Holy. keep you alive. Yes. Yes. Woo! Don't worry. That's right. He can't outdo God. Because the difference is God can see what he's doing but he can't see what God That's doing. Right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yes. So I want to invite you to the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to invite you to the family yes, sir. of the kingdom of God. Yes. And if you want the Lord to watch over you, then I dare you to accept his son, Jesus. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. If that's you, would you repeat after me? Say, Lord, Lord forgive me forgive for, my sins. for my sins. I acknowledge, I acknowledge my, wrongs. my wrongs. I believe, I believe that your son, Jesus, your son Jesus died on the cross. Died on the cross. Was buried. was buried. And on the third day morning, the third day morning God, the Father, God the Father raised him, raised him from, the dead. from the dead. Now, Lord, now, Lord I, open my heart, I open my heart. I receive you into my heart. Into my heart. As, my personal, As my personal Lord and Savior. Lord and Savior. Greater is he Greater that's, in me that's in me than he, than he that's, in that's in the world. If you said that with me, start trusting God yes, for the outcome. Yes, Watch him work on your behalf because he's an awesome God. Yes, he is. If you need a church home, we would love to be your church home. If you need someone to be the overseer of your life, if you want watch care, then we would love to be the servant that help watch care for your life. If you need a church home, please call us at 760 932 4260. And we'll be glad to accept you as part of the LOVN family. But most of all, as part of the kingdom of God's family. Give us a call because you need a church home. You need someone to watch over you. Also, if you've enjoyed this ministry and you want to support this ministry, send your ministry support through Givelify at Lily of the Valley Worship Center. Also, you go through our cash app. The cash app says the dollar sign LOV1779. You can call us here at the church at 760 932 4260. You can go on our website at Lily of at LOVWC. Excuse me, at www.lovwc. Org. If you'd like to send it to the post office, it is P.O. Box 2363, Palm Springs, California, 92263. We would love to have that ministry support, but most of all, we would love that if you come to Jesus just as you are and trust Him, trust Him for the outcome of your life. Trust him. Once again, happy Mother's Day. I know my daughters are watching. All of my daughters, happy Mother's Day. All of you all over the nation that is watching, happy Mother's Day. And keep the faith. Trust God for the outcome. May the blessings of the Lord be upon you. Until Wednesday at 6 o'clock Pacific Coast time, we will meet you again on live streaming. Trust God. Trust God. Trust God. Trust God. Trust God. Trust God.
for the outcome. Yes, yes. God bless you.